Uh, hello everybody, this is Mark in Virginia. Um, welcome to my relic room. Um, this video is not going to be about my relic room though. It's going to be about my settings on the GPX 4500. Um, Dale and I were talking a couple weeks ago and I asked him, I said, how long have we had these GPXs? He couldn't remember, and I couldn't remember. So I went back and looked it up. Um, the first time we used our GPXs at a DIV was in October of 2011. And that was uh, the last hunt that uh, DIV had at Stoma Switch. So nine years I've been swinging this GPX. Um, I've had so many people, especially recently, ask me what settings I use. Um, and so I, I've helped a lot of people out, both out in the field uh, at DIV and through email and uh, instant messaging, sending them my, uh, my settings. So I figured I'd do a little video um, just to show you how I set my machine up and to give you a few little pointers and hints. Um, a lot of the guys that come to DIV um, have GPXs, but they're only using them at DIV, you know, maybe once or twice a year. Um, they don't use it um, at, doing, at, uh, at their normal hunting sites, you know, across the country. Um, whereas I use the GPX everywhere when I'm relic hunting. Doesn't matter if it's good ground or if it's bad ground. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the GPX, uh, it is a pulse induction machine. Um, and several years ago, somebody found out that pulse induction machines um, cut through the highly mineralized soil out in Culpeper County, um, searching for Civil War relics. And then the game was on. First uh, pulse induction machine I bought was a Garrett Infinium. Um, I loved it. It was a virtual button magnet. Um, then I tried the, the uh, White's TDI. Didn't like that. I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't get the hang of that thing as most people can't. Um, and then saved some money up and uh, and I bought the GPX and I haven't looked back. So, I don't remember who gave me these settings. I don't remember where I got them. But nine years ago when I got this machine, I put these settings in. And I haven't changed a single setting ever since. So, I've got thousands and thousands of hours on this machine. I don't claim these settings to be the best. Um... Nobody, I'm sure nobody knows the best settings for this machine for relic hunting. There's thousands and thousands of different ways to, to set this thing up. But somehow I got lucky with these good settings and uh, I've been very successful with them. So um, let's start out with the, uh, with the front toggle settings. All right. You know what? I'm going to have to put my glasses on. Give me a second here. Okay. So, search mode. I hope y'all can see this. Um, search mode I have on custom. So you have deep or custom. Um, I keep it on custom. Soil, soil timings I keep on enhanced. Um, they're a special or enhanced. Um, so I used enhanced. Ground balance uh, we used fixed. Um, we don't uh, we don't use the, the uh, tracking on these machines. And the coil um, I'm running. I always run a double D. So again, um, all the toggles are. If you're looking at it straight on, all the toggles are up. So custom, enhanced, fixed, and double D. 
I keep my threshold down low. Um, I let my headphones do all the work when it comes to the threshold. So, all right, takes care of the front panel. Now let's look at the uh, at the screen settings. Let's turn the thing on. All right, I always keep mine set at manual tune. Um, that way, if I'm out hunting and I need to find a a frequency that's not so noisy I just I don't have to go looking for manual tune it's there so I just change to whatever frequency is quiet for me so it's just a preference um, just makes it uh, quicker so let's go all the way to the top now right now um, okay the top is a backlight I keep my backlight off as you should too um, the backlight will cause your battery to drain quicker. Um, I have it on now so, uh, so we can see the screen together. So, uh, but yeah, keep your backlight off. Um, battery test, well, it's just a way to test to see what, how much battery life you have left. Um, now I use this battery. Um, this past weekend a little bit so I'm still at 7.9 when they're fully charged they run about this should be about 8 and when they get down to about 7.3 then they'll usually start beeping at you um, now I run the uh, I run the gold screamers um, it's just my preference it makes the machine lighter and and I'm not tied to the uh, to the big bulky um, battery that you can wear or you can uh, they also have setups where you can put the big battery here it just adds weight so I prefer the gold screamers okay volume limit I keep at 20 now you're gonna notice that all my volumes I keep set up rather high and I have a reason for that um, I want to be able to hear every faint deep signal there is um, if you run at the uh, at the factory presets, then you risk not hearing some of the deepest, faintest targets. So I keep my volume limit at 20, um, which is maxed out. So I think fact yeah, factory preset is 12. Um, I keep mine at 20. Next we have GB type. Um, general, um, your other options are specific or GB off. Um, general is factory preset. Okay, next we have special. Okay, I keep mine and I run mine. It's special, sensitive, extra. The other options are salt, coarse, sharp, sensitive, smooth. So, sensitive extra, that is the factory preset. So, on the screen, it'll show up as special extra. Manual tune, well, it's whatever's quiet for you. Um, and again, I keep mine set at manual tune, again, so I can go right to it if I need to uh, find a quieter frequency. All right, test A, this is your custom settings. All uh, right, you have high mineral, high trash, patch. Patch is the factory preset. Don't run that. Run test A. Motion, I run mine in very slow. Slow is also good. Slow is a factory preset. Um, I had no problem with that. I, for some reason, I just keep mine on factory slow. Um, you really don't want to run medium or fast. I mean, you can, but when you're running, when you're swinging this machine, you want to go slow. You want to keep a slow swing speed. 
um, especially if you're in a rather trashy camp. So I run mine very slow. Again, slow is just fine. RX gain, I keep mine at eight, which is factory preset. Audio, I keep it normal. You have quiet, normal, or deep. I know a lot of people uh, like to run deep. I run normal, which is factory preset. Audio tone, 38. Um, that's just a preference uh, with your the pitch of your tones. Um, I think 38, again, was factory preset. Not that it really has a preset on that, but it's just uh, it's what I run all the time, so I'm used to it. Stabilizer, I run at 10, which I believe is, yep, factory preset. Signal, I run at 16, which is factory preset. It's a signal peak. Target volume, I run at 16, which is up there a ways. Um, and that goes back to what I said earlier about being able to hear the targets. The real deep, faint targets. Um, your factory preset on your target volume is 8. I run mine at 16. Uh, response, I run normal. Your options on that are normal or inverted. That basically just um, reverses the tones. So if you have a low high, then it would be a high low. I run so, my normal preset, factory preset. Tracking, we don't worry about. All right, iron reject. Um, I ran into several people at the last DIV who were having problems, and I went and looked at their machine, and they had their iron reject off, which is factory preset. That's going to drive you nuts. You're going to pick up everything. Every little piece of iron is going to sound good, and you're going to be wasting a lot of time digging junk. I run mine usually at 8. Sometimes I'm bumping down to 7. But most people will tell you between 7 and 8 is ideal. You definitely don't want to run it up to 10 because then you will risk canceling out good targets. Um, even at 8, what it's going to do is it'll cancel out a lot, of your, a lot more of your surface iron. Um, but it's going to let you hear the deeper iron. So running in eight, uh, you're going to hear the deep barrel bands and trash pits and huts. You're going to hear the deep cannonballs. You're going to hear anything larger iron that's really deep, even set up at eight. So uh, let's see, where else do we have? Custom name, I've never named mine. So there you go, there are my settings. Um, now I'm going to go over a couple little, uh, couple tips. Um, now you see I run the, B, uh, the, the, uh, D-Tech Ultimate Spiral 15 inch coil. Uh, I love the thing. It's the deepest, uh, deepest coil out there right now, um, that I know of. So, and a lot of people have asked me, do I need to change any settings when I change coils? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, no. You don't have to change any settings when you change your coils. Um, I love this coil. Um, it has incredible target separation. Um, which, yeah, which is really great when, you, when you're dealing with, uh, with relic hunting. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you want to fork out low extra money, that coil is the way to go if you want to go deeper. Um, again, I run the, uh, the uh, um, Gold Screamer batteries. Um, a lot of people also ask me, because uh, they know I hunt, use this machine in both good and bad ground. Um, 
They asked me if I changed any settings depending on where I'm hunting, and the answer to that is no. Um, no need to change any settings. The only thing you're going to want to do if, uh, if every time when you turn this thing on is first thing you do is you're going to want to ground balance it. Um, I usually only have to ground balance this thing initially when I turn it on where I'm at. Um, every once in a while, especially out in Cold Pepper, if I'm changing terrain, uh, I'll find that I'll have to ground reground balance every so often. But in, but yeah, good ground, bad ground. You don't need to change any settings. So, um, oh, swing swing this thing slow, nice and slow. Uh, and the other very important thing, keep the coil as close to the ground as you can. I call it scrubbing the ground. Um, just think, think of it this way. If you're running and you're holding it, you got your coil up two, three inches off the ground, there's two or three inches of depth capacity that, uh, that you're losing. Uh, I also see a lot of people doing this. Try to get away from doing that because once you get to that point there you go you're losing depth so again keep this coil as tight to the ground as you can when you swing i know it's not always easy uh, you're hunting in stubble or you're hunting in the woods um, yeah it's not easy but uh, you know anytime you can keep it tight to the ground uh, that'll be a benefit to you so there you go folks um I hope this uh, this helps some people out. Um, give the give my settings a try. See how you like them. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you can just you know feel free to uh, to ask, and uh, I'd be more than happy to help. So, thank you for watching, and um, good luck out in the field.